We have the details of these stories, including sports and entertainment, coming up in the next one hour. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. And moving to action straight, the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Club Success, snitch statement that it has stopped payment of lump sum to pensioners is untrue. Executive Secretary Isaac Bampodo, in an interview with TV3, insisted documents from Snit indicate that some pensioners who retired this year were paid their lump sum, less, which was less than 200 cis. The statement by Snit indicates that it stopped the payment of lump sum to pensioners in December 2019. It's again indicated that the clock sucks assertion that some pensioners were paid less than 200 cis was a lie. His date of birth, 8th March 1960. He joined the scheme 1st November 1981. Date of retirement, 8th March 2020. This is SNIT's document. It's not a document. 25% lump sum should pass rate. 160 Ghana cities. But Clark Sag insists Senate is still paying less than 200 cities to pensioners who retired this year. I mean, all of them worked for 40 years. 10 years contributions are with the schemes. 30 years contributions are with SNIT. This uh, Ajiman who say we paid him the hedge, the trust from 2010 to date. That's about 10 years. Paid Ajiman and will serve 4,431 cities. But have argued that the amount could be an error. But the Executive Secretary Zimbabwe disagrees. Payment done by SNIT, 13th March 2020. So if SNIT is telling the general public that they, they don't pay that how did they pay this one? And they transferred to the Mar Bank, in Kwabiaja Rural Bank, Limited, Barry Kesi. They did a transfer. It's neat. So are they not deceiving the public? That's why we are saying this one is Kofiko virus. He demanded that the transfer funds in its custody to the registered schemes by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority immediately. They are a law itself. They don't respect any law in Ghana. That's neat. And should everybody be like that? We are not in a jungle. He does not respect any law in Ghana. The funds under their management is not government funds, it is workers' funds. We are consulting with our executives, other associations and unions. But I think the next thing we have to do is take legal action. Coronavirus pandemic has thrown the Electoral Commission's timetable for the December 7 general elections out of gear. Now, time appears to be running out, and some legal brains have been assessing the best points and options. Dennis Poiberi has more in the following report. Ghana's 1992 constitution under Article 63.2 requires that presidential elections be held not earlier than four months before the end of tenure of office of the sitting president. It further provides in Article 66 that the election be held every four years. This means that the 2020 general elections must be held between September 7, 2020 and January 7, 2021. But in the face of the coronavirus global pandemic, which requires social distancing among other protocols as a way of mitigating its spread, is it possible for Ghana to have the election within the stipulated time should the pandemic persist? In a virtual seminar organized by the University of Ghana Law Faculty, former Dean of the Gempa Law Faculty and Secretary to the Elmer Short Commission, Dr. Ernest Kofi Abuchi, said public safety must be at the center of making a decision whether or not to have the election. The Constitution is ripe and ripe with all kinds of provisions dealing with public health and safety, public health and safety. So whatever we do, we must take account of public health and safety. I have actually said not long ago, recently, that nobody must endanger himself in the process of trying to exercise a civic duty or responsibility. And so I don't expect that the Electoral Commission, for example, will be trying to compile a new voters 
register. There's a clear public policy directive that people should socially distance, people should decongest among us. Managing partner at Sorry at Law, Sadhu Sorry, says it is possible, depending on how it is conducted. So far, practically, there is an effort to do it. After all, we understand that the elect uh, electoral commission is going through certain processes, even under these circumstances. So I assume that there's a commitment to do it. It's how we do it, achieve it within the rules and, uh, and context of it, that will matter. Privately, practitioner and lecturer Clara Biri Kasati proposes the EC adopt innovative ways to make the election possible. What is our own unique situation that we have to devise with around for ourselves? If we take the issue of voter registration, I, I always say that if we are going to be limited registration, for example, I'm thinking that a lot of the people who will be subject to limited registration are going to be the new voters. And a lot of these new voters are computer babies. So if we, if we work around it, we can have a lot of them doing online registration. We have a lot of other um, um, state institutions that they can work with. The PhD candidate and lecturer at the KNUST Law Faculty, Christopher Inevi, agrees, but cautions the against acts which will lead to litigation, which may deal with the electoral process. The electoral commission must be mind of a number of things. So in, in its uh, handling of the electoral process, it must be sure not to be too, you know, uh, to be to be taking a hardline stance that may result in court cases, which may prolong the uh, may disrupt the electoral calendar. So, for instance, the the idea that it wants to uh, compile a new voters register with only um, passports and national IDs as the identification documents may definitely uh, end the electoral commission up in court. Meanwhile, the minority in parliament is also demanding that the EC be summoned to brief the House on its plans for the upcoming elections. The constitution provides that presidential and parliamentary elections will be held this year. Even as we struggle with COVID, the Independent Electoral Commission created under Article 45 of this constitution owes this country and members of parliament a duty. They would have to be someone to come and give us their roadmap as to the preparedness in view of COVID. All discussants at the lecture agree that these are uncharted territories and any decision taken must be well thought through to further the country's democracy. Now, as you may already know, Ghana's case count for COVID-19 has increased to 2,719. That's an additional 550 new cases that has been added to the old uh, number. Now, uh, we'll take the regional breakdown quickly before we move on. The greater Accra region, which has the highest number, uh, 2,332, that is an additional 480 more cases in the greater Accra region. In the Ashanti region, there's 124 cases. Seven more cases have been added uh, onto that of the Ashanti region. In the Eastern region, there is 94 cases. There used to be 87 and now seven more cases have been added to that of the Eastern region. In the Central region, there's 38 cases. That region used to have 21 cases. Now, now, 17 more cases have been added to the central region. In the Volta region, where we had 16 cases before, 30 more cases have been added to that of the Volta region. In OT region, there seem to be four more cases added on to that of the region because it used to be 19. Now it is 23. In the Western region, that's 21 cases. The cases used to have, uh, the, the um, region used to have nine cases now 12 more has been added on in the upper west region there's 19 uh, cases there and it seems that that region uh, used to have 10 cases nine more has been added in the upper east region where uh, it used to be 19 it's still 19. in the north region um there used to be um 13 uh, cases and it's still 13 that means that region has maintained its case count in the western north region um it i that 
region has also maintained its case count. And then the North Northeast region has two. Savannah region hasn't recorded a case yet. Bono region has not recorded a case yet. So has the Ahaf region and Bono East region. So that is the uh, regional breakdown of the cases. And the new case now starts at 2,719 cases. Isa. Thanks. And now the Kolobu Teaching Hospital says all seven patients who were admitted at the Kolobu Teaching Hospital have all recovered. A statement signed by Chief Executive Dr. Daniel Sari said the patients were discharged after a series of tests and confirmatory tests proved negative. The statement said the recovered patients include a nurse and elderly or a doctor and security officer. Now, the patients were impressed with level of care and reiterated their commitment to fight the pandemic. The discharged patients were charged, were urged at the forefront of the fight against the stigma of COVID-19 patients. All right, so on the back of that good news, let's speak to Dr. Harry Akutu. He is a Deputy Director, Medical Affairs, Kolobu Teaching Hospital. Good evening, Doctor, and thank you for your time. Uh, good evening. Right, so uh, what therapy or medicines were given to these patients, I mean those who have recovered? In terms of medication, we haven't done anything very different from what every other centre is doing. We basically treat them symptomatically, so the treatment for each patient varies. It depends on the symptoms you are presenting with, okay, and that's basically it. The other aspect of the treatment, which uh, we try to boost a lot, is the psychotherapy, where we try to improve the psychology, mainly, especially when these people are uh, people we know, it is easier to interact with them, and the psychological impact was huge there. And I think that probably may have made a big difference. Mm. So uh, are there more tests for them, and uh, how will their treatment help others caring for COVID patients? Well, their treatment has been a huge, has made a huge impact. Uh, the patients and friends are ecstatic. Uh, some of them were discharged were all in fear because they couldn't believe it over and were full of praise. In fact, a couple of them actually made statements like they would want to nurse or treat patients who had COVID-19. But beyond that, I think it would be a moral booster for other staff who are in the system and who have seen the disease from afar, but now they are experiencing it because because a colleague of the has gone through it and lived through it and is back very happy. And that is going to help boost their morale a lot. And I think it's a good thing that this has happened. Right. I, I think one issue of concern is that people who have been treated can be reinfected. How prepared is Kolebu to receive those patients and even new ones to come back there for treatment? Well, we are a facility and we are open for business. Our sole aim is to help those who are here. So anybody, it can be staff or non-staff, if they come out here with uh, any symptoms, any disease related to COVID-19 or any other disease for that matter, we are here, we are trained and we are ready to help with uh, management in any possible way we can. Right. Thank you very much, Doctor, for the insight you've given us into the COVID-19 issue and point at Kolebu Hospital. Let's look at some more stories. And the National Media Commission says it has no power to ban content on any radio or television station. Now, Chairman Yao Boyaboafo was reacting to some media reports that the commission had banned 
and all broadcasts and advertisements of fetish priests and malams on radio and television. We are in the process of enacting a broadcasting law. Okay. There's a broadcasting bill, and I'm hoping that when Parliament resumes, that bill will come up for discussion. Mm -hmm. If Ghanaians want some of these things to be banned, mm -hmm. that's where we should canvas so that it will be incorporated into the broadcasting law. And then the broadcasting law will lay out clearly that this kind of content is not permitted on radio or television. Mm -hmm. And if you do, these are the sanctions. It is only then that the National Media Commission can apply. Okay. Because otherwise, the commission has not taken itself in a step. He said, just like pastors are allowed to preach, he sees nothing wrong with fetish priests and malams also advertising their products and skills on television. What is so reprehensible about what happens, especially with malams and fetish priests? Because when people talk, they, they forget about, about I mean, reverend ministers in, in Christianity, who, who also do some of these things? That is my worry, that if we think that that corner is abominable, let's fight it from every angle, and not single out some individual, because we, we're here. I mean, Reverend Minister said he's been going to Switzerland, then he enters the bank, he swallows money, when he comes back to Ghana, he makes it, and he puts it at the bank. Is that, is that similar to what those money people are doing? He called on media their houses to cross Jafats before airing them. Joseph Armstrong, T3, Accra. Now, the chairman of the National Media Commission, Yabuidu Aibafo, has called on journalists not to wait till one of their own is brutalized before showing concern. Speaking at a flag raising ceremony to mark World Freedom Day, he urged the media to report on any act of brutality without fear or favor. We must not wait until a journalist is brutalized before we speak against brutalization of individuals. And whoever is brutalized, whichever Ghana is not treated fairly by the state apparatus, we must fight that. And we must not reserve our energy and do it only when one of us is involved. If we do that, the rest of society will disown us. He added, Media houses and journalists should focus on winning the trust of the public rather than creating tension in society. We are not working for fame. We are working so that our society will grow. So whether people comment us or do not comment us, we must continue to do the work that we do. Because if nobody even says thank you, God above will recognize the thing that we are doing and posterity will judge us and acknowledge the fact that we contributed what we needed to contribute in terms of what we're doing. May 3rd, to commemorate the day celebrated to raise awareness regarding the importance of press from. It is also a day for remembrance of journalists who lost their lives in the line of duty. May we, in all humility, rise up and observe a minute silence in honor of four of our departed colleagues C.S. Boabin of Graphic and NMT fame, Johnny Aite, former acting director of GTV, Edward Kwabi, head of the political desk of TV3, and Jifa Amakato, secretary at the press center. President of the Ghana Journalist Association, Afomoni, said, press freedom does not mean informing the public. We take umbrage over the breezy disregard for ethical values by certain media men and women who are consumed by incontinent ego and surfeited with prideful arrogance. Press form is a liberty, not a license. Liberty to perform and not a license to destroy. The offenders must take note and duly repent. On the matter of investigative journalist Ahmed Swali, he urged the police to step up the investigations to find the killers. Deputy Minister of Information, Nana Amma Isiyama Eji, assured the media of government commitment to support measures which deepens the frontiers of free expression in the advancement of the country's democracy. The theme for the celebration is journalism without fear or favor.
You're watching News 360 live here on TV3. Let's now take a look at our MTN video report for this evening. This is an electrical pole 30 meters from uh, CTSK Hotel in Enigo, Afrandi Street. The dam has been burned for a while now. Just look at it, and there are cables over it. So just assume somebody passing by, maybe your loved one, your family, your friend, and this is just collapse. Just, just imagine what would be the crazy cases. So we are calling on the authority. This is your citizen journalist, Eric Agbesi. Greater Accra, the go Papra. You can also send us your video report at WhatsApp 0551433044. That's 0551433044. All right, the day is not now with other business news, which is up next on News 360. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. Let's now do a business. Goods clearance at the Tema Port has picked up following the restoring of GC Net West Goods operating systems. Importers and freight forwarders inundated various clearing points as container terminals and banks were also choked. Josephine and JJ has more in the following report. The backlog was created due to the disruption in the clearance process. Various points were overwhelmed with importers. At the Terminal 3 facility, operated by the Meridian Ports and Service, transporters were moving containers from holding areas for scanning. It was not different at the shipping lines as importers waited for the cargo that came through during the standoff period to be released. The banks would collect import duty but was unable to serve customers for two days busy but the process was slow import declarations processed on consignment were also slow at other terminals to ease the facility because of this social distancing issue we are not allowed to enter the banks in our in huge numbers and another thing is that the banks themselves have also cut down on the number of their staff and, and so it is impacting negatively on the, 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 the workflow. Uh -huh. So that's why uh, payment of duty now is a challenge for us. The system is working uh, since uh, it was restored. It's working perfectly. We gathered that two hours after the system was restored, about 3,000 documents passed with importers paying up 45 million cities. The novel coronavirus pandemic has led to some decline in revenue for February and March because most of Ghana's trade traffic comes from China, Singapore and Malaysia. April is likely to be worse since the setback has been compounded. With the disruption in goods clearance, many are hopeful the situation will normalize. Still on the impact of COVID-19, the pandemic has stimulated a certain level of manufacturing in Ghana. However, the slowdown in the global supply chain is a challenge to large-scale import substitution manufacturing as most raw materials are sourced from outside the country. My colleague Erin Ejikumbo-Ating has more in the following report. In the areas of medical research, in the area of you know, manufacturing, uh, hand sanitizers, and then trying to get some kind of uh, vaccine. As far as the new masks are concerned, obviously it has triggered some kind of you know, production locally. So in this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, some areas have, have triggered some kind of local production, but obviously not in every sector. As the COVID-19 pandemic heightens with its uncertainties, the advanced economies seem to be geared up for a manufacturing line. Their economies and industries are less rigid, making it easy to adapt to changes. The issue with local content in our economy and all of that, uh, even if you look at the scrabble for PPs and, and the fact that the, the pharmaceutical industry 
was just not up to it and all of that. Fundamentally, we, uh, the pandemic has exposed the weakness in our policy prescriptions all this war, and, 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 and therefore we cannot continue in the same manner post-COVID-19. Director of Business Operations at Dex Finance, Joe Jackson, undersold the need for the country to move up a higher gear in its import substitution drive. As we said, we can't import as much as we wish to. But Ghana's whole food security process is based on importation. The things we import are so many. Simply put, we will not be able to import them anymore. As the COVID-19 pandemic reaches, its negative effect on global supply chain are more apparent than ever. World Uncertainty Index predicts COVID-19 is likely to produce a 300% increase in uncertainty, reducing global supply chain chain activity by 35.4%. Labor expert Bernard Arthur noted this could limit the ability of the country's manufacturing sector to scale up even as entrepreneurs want to turn challenges into opportunities. A lot of the input also comes from the outside world. So in such areas, we must accept that though we can boost local consumption, it's not in every area that at the end of the day, we will be able to enhance our production. These are some challenges I think that we need to address. He noted government already has some protectionist policies for manufacturers, but needs to balance incentives and not to be given across board. We must also balance the incentives with the necessity of having the coffers intact. We should rather put it where a lot of energy and resources are required. If import substitution is the way to go, then there is the need for low-cost manufacturing hubs in the country to spearhead production. Eben Ajekumwatin, TV3, Accra. Also, management of the Kumasi Abattoir fears imminent meat shortage if Ghana's borders remain closed in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The only solution now, and according to the managers, is to boost local production. Here's a report by William Evans -Nikum. Ideally, the production capacity of flayed cattle at the Kumasi Abattoir is 400 with 50 cents. But now, flayed cattle production has dropped to 110 with a cent production falling to 28. The drop in animal supply from some neighboring countries threaten future meat processing in the country. Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger have currently closed their borders, curtailing animal supply to the Ghanaian market. Animals are not coming the way we are expecting them. So now, at the moment, you see, when you look around, no transport. At Africa, you will see a lot of long, long cars here. Because we have brought in more animals, but now you don't see them. The only solution now is to boost the local production. Uh, if, if time may come, Ghanaians will find difficult to get meat to eat. The current situation has affected the price of meat. That's all for business this evening. You can log on to 3news.com for more business news. Isaka. Thank you, Aisha. Now, the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department, C.O.P. Ken Yabua, says the police is collaborating with the National Media Commission to clamp down some individuals parading as fetish priests and malams on some television networks. He was bringing the media on ongoing investigations into crimes, including that of a fetish priest at Mamedadi near Adesso after some two days were resumed close to his shrine. We have a task force here at the CID headquarters and uh, we have even written to the commission to help us with all TV and radio stations that we have their locations so that we can investigate the further because it's a, con a concern to all of us. He said, apart from the retreat bodies, suspect Christian Gamali Lawo had some skulls and body parts in his shrine, which were also retrieved. The police intensified investigation, and on 21st of April 2020, the police arrested suspect Christian Gamali Lawo, alias Power, 36 year old and famous Adobe 
Okunu, he has Scorpion, 37, all from Afife in the Volta region, but all resident at Mamede near Adesu. Both sources are fetish priests, with their shrines located at the asket of Mamede. The director general of the CID, COP Isaac Kenny Oboa, said the police had made progress on investigation into the murder of the assembly member of Sugako Pepe South, Mauto Zagli. On 24th March 2020, suspect Amos Abakla, 25, was arrested at Sugako Pepe on suspicion that he was a member of the gang that attacked, robbed, and killed Mauto. Amos has provided information as to where they met to strategy before they went for the robbery and the role is played. He confessed that he, he together with one of the persons on the run shot the disease after the disease put up resistance which made a J to stop him. He further spoke on the matter of investigative journalist Ahmed Swali. People come with information last week people came with information we followed up but unfortunately we are unable to you know get a proper lead on the petition of two NDC executives concerning the supposed workshop organized by the EEC he said the electoral commission has denied organizing a workshop with more than 25 persons we are now going to look at the complaint against the um, the statement given by EC, and then he who alleges must prove. So we will be inviting all the parties to come to enable um, the petitioners, you know, prove to us that in actual fact there were more than 25 in a room. Not. Euro News 360, and there's so much. Time for some entertainment news. I'm Anita Ikuya And after two exciting editions of the three music awards, the third edition of the awards came off over the weekend virtually, which is the first of its kind here in the country. Yeah, I go hold you down if you say what me. Yeah. 2023 music awards held without a live audience because of the novel coronavirus and the ban on social gatherings. The event was held at the Fantasy Dome, saw some musicians perform on the night without an audience to cheer them on. The fun aspect of the show was never missed and many fans watched online. Sark swept five awards by claiming Music Man of the Year, Hip Hop Hip Hop Act of the Year, Fan Army of the Year, Best Rock Performance with the song Who the Man, featuring Quincy Arna and Best Collaboration Award for Sarah with Songless Ifia. Kinata, however, Arguably, won the biggest award of the night, the song of the year with his song, Things Fall Apart. He also won Highlight Song of the Year with the same song. Now, according to our beat singer Fantana, Wiala, Efia and Becca are the only internationally female artists from Ghana. She spoke to Miss Your New Day. Francine Nyanku Kofi, popularly known as Fantana, who has barely been in the music industry for a year, says she's getting tired of the constant jobs some female musicians throw at each other. She said the females can be doing better things instead of attacking themselves. The Rich Girl Anthem hitmaker further dismissed the assertion that Ghanaians do not support their own. Rather, the musicians have not given Ghanaians enough reason to be ported. I feel like it's nice to see everybody fighting every day because, like, can we do something else? Can we focus on other things? Because, but every day we're like attacking each other and talk about necessary things, while other artists and other people are being taken seriously. And for me, I wouldn't say Ghanaians don't support their own. I feel like the reason why Ghanaians don't support some of the musicians is because we haven't given them a reason to support us. The singer claims that apart from Muya, Becca and Efia, who are internationally acclaimed as female artists of Ghana, the rest, including herself, are not there yet. Me, 
and including the rest half of the female in the industry, we're a local champion because we're only known in Ghana. And then maybe we have our fan bases um, on social media. Maybe some people live in London, some people live here. But we're all local champions. And then there's only like three female musicians in Ghana who are known internationally, which I said was Becca, Effia, and um, Weala. So, never hide your face, girl, hide and away from Ghana, let's find out trending in the world of entertainment on the international front in its 60 seconds. Nigerian pioneer drummer Tony Allen, a co founder of the Afrobeat musical Jenna, has confirmed death in Paris at age 79, not knowing the exact cause of his death. His money, Eric Trossard, however, said it was not linked to the coronavirus. Alan was a drummer and a musical director of the musician Fela Kuti's famous band Africa 70 in the 1960s and 70s. Fela, who died in 1997, once said, Without Tony Allen, there would be no Afrobeat. Kanye West is officially a billionaire. The 42 year old star is one of the most acclaimed and biggest selling artists for the past 20 years. The magazine said the rapper and fashion designer who has long coveted the status gave it a glimpse into his personal finances which led it to value his net worth at 1.3 billion dollars despite now being officially classed as a billionaire west was unhappy with forbes and claimed they had undervalued him and that he is worth more on that note that's all for entertainment my name is anita Ikuyo. good evening and here there with all the latest in the world of entertainment. That's all from us. But let me remind you, as we all uh, well know, the numbers, the COVID-19 case keeps increasing. So you might want to take care of yourself out there as you're already doing. Pay attention to all the precautionary measures being given out. Wash your hands as frequently as possible. Wear your face mask if you have to go out and maintain the social distancing protocol. That's all from us this evening on News 360. My name is Aisha Yakubu. And I'm Easter Morning. Stay home if you don't really